What's up guys, welcome to another episode. Today's video is gonna be all about white balance. More specifically, how to fix white balance and manipulate it in post-production. So before I go any further, I just wanna make sure that if this is your first foray into white balance or you've never heard that term and you were looking for it, uh, you should definitely stop this video and go check out that video right there. That's my intro to white balance basics video. And then after you've watched that, come back to this one and you'll be caught up and ready to roll. So just like the other exposure settings for cameras, we do have the ability to manipulate white balance in post-production. However, it's not as straightforward as you might think, and there are some problems associated with manipulating white balance in post-production. So today I'm gonna go through with you on one, how to do it, what kind of tools there are to fix white balance and to adjust it or to change it, and two, what kind of problems you might discover uh, when you do that. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer and get started. All right, so let's start out with the basics here and let's take a look at my uh, award-winning Oak Leaf series. <laughs> so that's these guys here. So I took them all at different white balances and you can clearly see the color shifts. So we've got daylight, cloudy, shady, tungsten, fluorescent, and then this is manually pumped all the way down to 2500 and this is manually pumped all the way up to about 10,000. So let's go look at the ones that are starting to look amucked here. So we'll start with this one. So looking at this big screen, you can definitely tell the white balance looks off. This looks like a really bad, you know, day for night or some crappy horror movie or something. And the easiest way to fix the white balance for starters, I'm in Camera Raw and Bridge in Photoshop. Uh, but it's the same in Lightroom as in Camera Raw. All of these sliders are exactly the same. And if you're in Affinity Pro or whatever else you're using, chances are the white balance or temperature slider is gonna look pretty similar to this. So you'll notice here it says as shot and then it gives you my temperature, which is 3100. And we know that doesn't look right. So we know that we need to warm it up because it's too blue. So we need to add in some warmth. and this is where the slider comes in handy so you can see blue to the left yellow to the right which is warmth and as we start sliding up you can see the color temperature changing you see the number change and then you see the correlating color changed on the image so if we go to something like auto it'll put it to where it thinks it should be now I never use this I never let camera raw or lightroom pick my auto i just don't do it because it's just not it's not as accurate to me so what i would say is i would come down here first and say well it was daylight uh it might have been cloudy but let's start with daylight so now you're seeing daylight it's pumped it all the way up to 5500 and that's looking okay it's looking a bit warm so you might want to just drop it down just a hair and that's looking a little bit cooler now the next thing you could do is you could come up here and you can grab your white balance tool and you can hit I to do that as well and you can find a really bright spot or if you have a white balance card or a neutral gray card this is the time where you would click that card so I can click it there and then you can kind of see what it's doing but I don't really think it's doing that great of a job and in an image like this where there is no clear white uh, thing to click on it's just kind of guessing and in this case if you click on something that is not white and you tell it that hey this is white or this is middle gray then that's where you're going to see those color shifts so in my case I would actually slide it up a bit until something like there and then that's looking a bit proper so another thing is all right so let's take a look at another image here so let's go to one of these really extreme images so this one here, you can see I shot it at 9200 Kelvin. So that's about as warm as I could get it in camera. So just like before, we can use one of these custom ones. And if we know it was daylight out, then we can go ahead and click daylight. And you can see that brings it down to 5500, which is looking pretty solid. So here's where it gets a little interesting. So you notice that when we adjusted this, I went from as shot 9200 Kelvin all the way down to daylight which is 5,500 Kelvin. 
that you know for almost 4,000 degree Kelvin change in color temperature that I slid and I have not lost any detail in the color or the luminance or anything like that and if you don't know what luminance is that's the brightness values and colors all have their own luminances and then you can see that represented in the brightness of how they change so if I change this way off then you can see the luminance values are changing too and you can see that up here now my blues have shifted and spiked and if you redo it and fix it then now you can see all my blues have brought back down here and the luminance values have shifted. So the important thing to note here is that that's because I shot this in RAW. And if you're not shooting in RAW, let's take a look at what happens if you're shooting in JPEG and you amok your white balance too much in camera and try to fix it. Okay, so here's some images that are in JPEG. So here's the one that is normal and everything was shot correctly and it looks great. So here's one that I shot at 2500. So super blue, super cool, and obviously that doesn't match. So if I wanted to fix this, I would do the same thing, right? I would open up camera raw, just like I did with my, my raw image, except remember this is a JPEG. So what happens is JPEG gets crushed a lot. If you don't know the difference between raw and JPEG and you wanna learn more in detail about this stuff, check out this video right here. So now let's go ahead and try to fix this. So I know I need to bring in a lot of orange. So you can see I'm sliding it up to where it should be. I mean, I'm pumping a lot of orange into here. If I bring this way up, almost all the way up, this is, it should be a lot more orange. Uh, but there's just no color detail there because the JPEG threw all of that data out. And now we're trying to override it by adding this color into something that doesn't have the data there to begin with. So now you can see the, that should be a rainbow. There's no colors there. That, that does not look right. So it's the same thing here if I shot it a little too warm. So now you, I still have color there, so that's nice. But let's open it up in color raw because this looks like a horrible post-apocalyptic wasteland movie or something. So now if I come up here and I try to correct it, it's getting closer, okay? So that is much closer. So we're clicking on these grays here. So that looks a lot better. So with the warmer tones, it's a little bit more correctable than the extreme cooler tones. But let's go ahead and, so now let's compare it to the proper image. So we'll go ahead and open that. So here is the proper image. So now you can see, so now we can bring these next to each other here. And we can look, this is the proper image, and this is the image we corrected that was super orange. So at first glance, when you're not looking at this one on the right, this looks pretty good. But then you realize, oh, look at all of the detail I've lost. And you can see that right in here in these values here, you can see that they've crushed the whites a little bit. And you can definitely see that in the darks and over here in the mountainsides and of course in the clouds, it's just brightened everything up. And that's what I mean by the luminance values. So by adding in that blue to what this was, so if we do that, this is what it was, and then we try to fix it, we've brightened it up a lot. And that's again, because this was a JPEG, and this was a JPEG that was tried to correct too harshly, too far, and it just couldn't do it because there wasn't enough data and then it bumped up the luminance values as it was trying to correct it. So the moral of that story is shoot raw when you can or at least if you know you're going to be editing a lot and if you're shooting in JPEG, make sure you nail that white balance as close as possible. So let's take a look at one more scenario where white balances can be really tricky, especially to get right in camera and that is for Astro stuff and also not just Astro stuff, but in this case, uh, it's astro and it's having multiple different light sources. So you can see here is the raw image and I on this one I used a loom cube to light it up uh, just a little bright light and the loom cubes are really cold lights and they have that here they have that magenta looking tint. So if I come over here we notice that I shot this in auto white balance so let's go ahead and click on it. So we can see as shot, 
that we were at 4300. Well, for the night stuff, for the sky, I would like it to be a little bit cooler. So if I start bringing this down to where I want the sky, so let's say I want the sky somewhere around there. So I think that makes the sky look better uh, to me, but look what it did to the rest of the image. Now that looks horrible. So this is where we can start getting a little creative with fixing white balance. And this is where you're gonna have to take it a step further for global adjustments. And this can be done with any type of image uh, that, you, that has like sunsets or astro stuff or multiple lights anywhere. So I'm gonna come up here to the adjustment brush and I'm just gonna change that and bring up the temperature. Now I'm just gonna start painting in where I want it. And already we can see that that's making a much bigger difference. So now that we've got the adjustment brush, we can change it and I can pump it up even more and get it looking a little bit more natural. So I'm not gonna go into doing this image any further. I actually have a video if you wanna see how I edited this image right here. Uh, I actually have a whole video on that. You can check that out right here. So here's another great example of white balance needing to be fixed. So these are just a bunch of images that I shot for uh, some stock photo projects that I sold. And you can see um, piddling here with exposures and all of that stuff. And I clearly did not mess with my white balance as much as I should have in camera because all of these images are looking a bit worn. So I shot as shot, it says 50-50s. But with food, I don't really like to have that warm of a white balance. I like a more natural look with more natural lighting. And when you're indoors with light that is not daylight calibrated, uh, you know, you, you tend to get those orangish looking images. So I just wanna go ahead and drop this down just a little bit. And I think that already is starting to look much better. And you can't tell too much until you see the difference. So that's before and that's after. And this is looking much, much better. And those apples are looking like apples and they're much more appetizing. So keep that in mind when you're indoors doing stuff like that. And if you're interested and you wanna know more about doing actual food photography, I have another great tutorial on that. You can check that out right up here. But that's pretty much it. The moral of the story here is to, again, shoot in raw when you know you're gonna be editing and definitely try to remember to nail that white balance as close as you want in camera before you get it into post. All right, so hopefully that gave you a little bit better understanding of not only of white balance itself, but also how, when, and why you can manipulate it in post-production. And hopefully too, that'll give you a little bit better understanding for the importance of getting it right in camera and making sure all of your exposure and white balance settings are as dialed in as you can possibly get before taking your photo or video to post-production. So if you have any questions about anything that I went over or didn't go over concerning white balance and fixing it in post, make sure you leave those in the comments below and I'll definitely answer them. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I've got new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Hit that like button if this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.